Marine pollution is a serious environmental issue. For decades, humans have been dumping garbage and chemicals into the ocean. According to Scientific American, 8 million metric tons of plastic waste pollute the ocean on a yearly basis, and the UN reported the waste is harming over 800 different species. And one creature at the bottom of the sea has had enough. An invader emerges from the water to conquer mankind and punish them for harming the beautiful ocean. That creature is... A little girl? Meet Squid Girl, the invader that's come to, uh, enslave the human race. Squid Girl, or Shinryak Ikamusume as it's called in Japan, is a manga series authored by Masahiro Anbei and was first published in July of 2007 in Weekly Shonen Champion. The plot revolves around the eponymous Squid Girl and her efforts to conquer mankind. Well, it would be, but thanks to a hole she blew in a wall at a beach house, it's more like she's the one being enslaved. The invader is forced to work at the beach house, named Lemon, until she can pay off the repair bill. Squid Girl, or Ika Musume, is a humanoid squid, as in she can literally do what a squid can. She can extend and control the tentacles on her head, spit squid ink, breathe underwater, and swim with grace without moving her arms, amongst several other abilities. She also loves shrimp, it's an easy way to motivate her. The Lemon Beach House is owned by the Aizawa family. Eiko, a tomboyish high schooler with a snarky attitude, Takeru, a young boy that is fascinated by Squid Girl and loves to play with her, and Chizuru, the manager of the beach house and kind-hearted older sister. Unless you get on her bad side. And with this ensemble is one more employee, Nagisa Saito, who took up a job there because she can do what she loves easily on her time off, surf. But she is terrified of Squid Girl, taking the Cephalopod Conqueror's threats seriously. The series has a wide variety of recurring characters that drop by too. To name just a few, Sanai Nagatsuki, a peppy young girl who is a huge simp for Squid Girl, Goro Arashiyama, the buff lifeguard on the beach dedicated to doing his job, who is a huge simp for Chizuru, and Cindy Campbell, the obligatory American character and drop dead gorgeous fan service. She is a top MIT graduate and a scientist interested in analyzing Squid Girl as a possible alien. Cindy appears along with fellow top MIT graduates dubbed the Three Stooges that develop wacky inventions to aid their alien catching cause, usually doing more harm than good in the process. Squid Girl received an anime adaptation first airing on October 4th, 2010 by animation studio Diomedea, airing for 12 episodes. In quick succession, a second season dropped on September 26, 2011, less than a year after the first season began. Additionally, the series received three OVAs packaged with volumes 12, 14, and 17 of the manga. And Squid Girl even had the honor of crossing over with Nintendo's own Squid Kids in 2015 Splatoon on the Wii U, getting her own set of gear in the game, as well as some cool promo art. Unfortunately, she's nowhere to be found in the sequel. Splatoon even bade farewell to Squid Girl when Anbei's manga about her came to an end. Squid Girl managed to be a fun, successful series in Japan, so how did it fare over in the English-speaking world? Today, we look at Squid Girl's English dub history, going over three dubs, their cast members, and the impact this Emissary of the Sea had in a different human language. Squid Girl didn't take long to swim over to Western shores, with the show's original Japanese run being simulcast with English subtitles on Crunchyroll, followed by an English dub of Season 1 coming out less than a year after the Japanese version. The Ink Spitting Invaders English dub was first heard on September 27, 2011, when Squid Girl Part 1 came out on DVD licensed by Media Blasters. The dub was recorded by California-based studio Bang Zoom Entertainment. By now, I think it's time to address the whale in the room. The Squid Girl anime is full of puns in Japanese. The titular tentacle trespasser has a peculiar phrase in Japanese, adding degesel to her sentences. Without boring you too much with the details, it is a play on the old-fashioned sentence suffix degesu, with gesol meaning squid tentacle. Moreover, every episode title in the series is a pun, with each vignette ending in naika, which makes the sentence a negative question, with emphasis on ika, which means squid. And there are many other puns throughout the show's run. Fans of the original release of the series wondered how or even if the dub would handle this. The dub could have foregone the water-based wordplay in an awkward, stilted way by leaving it alone, but instead, the folks behind the script played up the jokes. Squid Girl labels herself as an ink fader of the surface world and spouts off nautical puns in most every sentence, 
ranging from common exclamations like what the gill and tentacular to replacing words in her vocabulary like gilly instead of really and jet instead of get to some really creative ones. Oh yeah, I'll show you what happens when I really get cracking. <laughs> that line right there is what sold me on this dub. And the show handles other puns well too, not just aquatic jokes. One of the very first puns is Eiko asking if Squid Girl knows what a gun is, pronounced in Japanese as Ju, which can also mean 10. So Squid Girl holds up her arms and shows her 10 fingers. In English, Eiko asked if Squid Girl came with firearms, so it cleverly repurposes what Squid Girl is doing in the scene. The star squid of the show is voiced by Christine Marie Cabanos. This is Christine's second role ever, her first being Azusa and Kaon. She would later go on to voice Chiaki and Anami in the Danganronpa series, and Nepgear in the Hyperdimension Neptunia series. It was one of Christine's first roles in a now decade-long career that continues to this day. 17-year-old waitress Eiko Aizawa's voice actor is Heath Pennington. Heath doesn't have as extensive a resume as other actors on the cast, but they've also been the voice of Oriana in League of Legends. And I'm not sure if they curate their IMDb page or not, but they apparently are also Nobi's mom and Lil G in the LUK dub of Doraemon. Fun fact, did you know I mentioned Doraemon in every single video in this series? Eldest sister and friendly shop owner Chizuru's voice is provided by Shelby Lindley. Again, not an extensive resume compared to the rest of the cast, but Shelby is also the voice of Sumugi in Keon, Hitomi Shizuki in Madoka Magica, and Ram in the Hyperdimension Neptunia series. And young Takeru is voiced by Amanda Miller, also known for being Toko and one of the voices of Junko in the Danganronpa video games, Boruto Uzumaki in Boruto, and Sailor Jupiter in the Studiopolis redub of Sailor Moon. Others on the cast include Jason Wishnoff, Christina V, Laura Post, and Xanthi Wynn. And the dub is directed by Tony Oliver. Many of you know him as the voice of Arsene Lupin III, but he's also an accomplished director, having worked on the first two Danganronpa video games, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and Love Live School Idol Project. Media Blasters released Squid Girl Part 2 on November 8th, 2011, closing out the Season 1 episodes. Not long after this, Media Blasters announced on Facebook Season 2's release was in the works, but that claim seemed fishy. At the time, Media Blasters was not doing well as a company, and this announcement was only on a Facebook comment, not a news report or solicitation. The anime distributor never followed up with ANN's request for details about this announcement, more and more reason to suspect this claim does not hold water. So Squid Girl fans waited. And waited. And waited. Until finally, November 28th, 2012, over a year after the last DVD release, Media Blasters announced the release of Squid Girl Season 2 had been cancelled. In reply to a comment on Facebook asking about if the company would release Squid Girl Season 2, a Media Blasters rep said, The answer is no, but not by our choice. I hope that we can eventually get this resolved and going again, but for now, do not look at it from us. Fans westward would be waiting with bated breath for a dub of Season 2, but on the other side of the world, it was a different story. Mankind has forgotten what the sea has done for them! That's why I'm going to punish mankind! Across the Pacific Ocean, on November 29th, 2013, Animax began to air Squid Girl in syndication. This dub was recorded in Hong Kong by Omni Productions. The station drummed up the release heavily, even doing a contest for participants to send in a custom Squid Girl hat to win grand prizes of cell phone straps and assorted Animax premiums, whatever those are. In the same vein as its American counterpart, Squid Girl's Animax dub kept in the sea-based puns, going as far as to call the title character an Ink Vader. Unlike the American version though, the Hong Kong dub did both seasons. <sighs> as with most dubs aired on Animax, this one is mostly lost, the only episodes available in full being 1-9 through nine from Season 2. Now, there is an episode of Season 2 fans were most curious about. Takeru encounters a stereotypical anime foreigner who asks for directions in English. No one in the group knows how to speak English, so they ask Cindy, who is American, for English lessons. We've talked before on this channel how dub scripts jet around this, but at least for the Animax dub, they play it straight. I mean, it's a hard subject to work around, and it takes serious creativity to work with it. Given the tight deadlines that these dubs run on, there likely wasn't even time to think of a way to do this cleverly. Not only really that, the lines where the characters actually do speak English in the Japanese version have subtitles at the bottom. You're not writing around that. 
It is really easier than speaking Japanese, you guess so. They say one who masters English is to become the master of all. For the cast, Squid Girl is voiced by Alice Beaver. She also provides the voice of another invader, being Tamama in the Hong Kong dub of Sergeant Kerodo. She's also been the voice of Natsumi, also in Sergeant Kerodo, and Wendy Hurt in Mobile Suit Gundam Age. I spoke with Alice via Instagram, and she was a big help with some of the details about this dub. She loved working on Squid Girl, and is one of her most favorite dubs she's ever worked on. I mean, how can you not love this role? She told me one of her favorite parts was Squid Girl vomiting Squid Ink. And guess what? We could talk about both Eiko and Takeru at the same time, as well as Kiyomi and Nagisa, because they're all voiced by Jessica de Borja. She's also been the voice of Shin Nosuke in the LUK dub of Crayon Shin-chan, Koyuki in seasons 3 and 4 of Sergeant Kororo, and several characters on Inazuma 11 Go 2. And last on the main character docket is Sarah Hauser as Chizuru. Like Jessica, she also plays multiple roles, those being Cindy and Ayumi. Sarah has also lent her voice to Doraemon in the LUK dub of Doraemon, Kony in Line Town, and Kerodo in seasons 3 and 4 of Sergeant Kerodo. As per usual for Omni Productions, the director for this dub is Victor Lee. So for dub fans, the only way to see a dub of season 2 was to watch the Animax version, and not everyone was keen on that. But a glimmer of hope would emerge a few years later. On October 4th, 2016, Texas-based anime licensor and dub studio Sentai Filmworks announced they had obtained the home video and streaming rights for Squid Girl. Not just for Season 1, but for everything. Season 1, 2, and the OVAs. Squid Girl fans excitedly speculated if this meant a dub was imminent, and if Sentai was dubbing it, if they would bring back the original cast. Anime Expo the following year would provide the answer to one of these questions. Yes. Sentai is making a dub, but no word on a cast yet. But voice actor and director John Swayze did drop a hint on Twitter. Swayze sent out a tweet on August 17th, 2017. Directing slash recording some fun anime at Todd Haberkorn Studios. Three days in LA. He also tagged Sentai Filmworks, added the hashtag Habertat, and had two photos with the tweet. One of him taking a selfie with a certain somebody, and the other of the editing setup. So who's in that selfie? Why it's none other than Christine Marie Kavanos. And what's that in the corner on the second picture? Eagle-eyed Twitter user Enzo is tired solved that mystery. Does this mean Sentai is bringing the gang back together for this season? Well, not Gilly. October 20th, 2017 rolled around, and Sentai Filmworks dropped a clip of the upcoming dub as well as the cast list. The headlines announced Christine Marie Kavanos would indeed be reprising the title character, but the rest of the cast is made of talent for Texas. To quickly go through the Aizawas one more time, Eiko is now voiced by Kira Vincent Davis, recognizable for her work as Lucy in Elfin Lead, Izuna in No Game No Life, and Minagi in Air. Chizuru's new voice actress is Lucy Christian, known for voicing Honey in Oron High School Host Club, Ochako in My Hero Academia, and Wrath in the 2003 Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, I think she's also that orange hair girl in that one show about pirates. I've heard it's her best known role or something. Might be worth looking into. And as a big change in casting, Takeru is voiced by Greg Ayers. Greg is also known for Tomoki in Heaven's Lost Property, Kaoru in Oran High School Host Club, and Monokuma in the Danganronpa anime. Kind of funny because Takeru is voiced by Junko in the first season. The ensemble also contains the likes of Emily Neves, Blake Shepard, Shelley Colleen Black, and Andrew Love. As shown earlier, the director for Season 2 is John Swayze, who has also directed Welcome to the NHK, Flip Flappers, and My Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu. I chatted with John on Facebook about Square Girl Season 2. John watched Season 1 to get an idea of the show's premise and characters, so he didn't go in feeling like a fish out of water. John stated Sentai did not have the opportunity to bring back the entire cast from Bang Zoom and believes it was to save money. With casting the new voice actors for the show, John noted it was a little bit of voice matching the original actors' performances, but putting in his own direction for a unique sound. The main thing was Christine Marie Cabanos as Squid Girl. A good call, might I add. As mentioned, John flew out to Todd Haberkorn Studios for a few days to direct Christine's lines. Working at Todd's was not a challenge once we got our workflow. His accommodations were outstanding, as was his staff. Thanks, John, for answering my questions. 
Season 2's dub keeps the spirit of Season 1 from six years earlier, complete with fishy puns sprinkled throughout the dialogue. But let's tackle one of the biggest questions mentioned before. What did Sentai do about the episode where the cast learns English? The Animax dub played it straight, but what did the dub over in the West do? Excuse me? Uh, I'm a bit lost. Uh, Which way is the station? Uh, they made it British English, and it is amazing. I mean, it is a gilly clever workaround, but the one who teaches them is Cindy, and she's American. The dub retcons this by saying Cindy at one point lived in London. The DVD release doesn't have the English subtitle shown when the characters speak English in the Japanese version, that's a weird sentence, so it helped in writing the different dialogue. I find it to be even squittier than trying to speak American. They say one who masters British accents is the master of all. Not only did Sentai dub season 2, they also dubbed the OVAs that originally came with certain volumes of the Squid Girl manga in Japan. And Sentai even swam the extra mile to commemorate Squiddy's return, selling the crawdaddy of all Squid Girl releases. A premium edition box set with season 1, 2, the OVAs, and a bunch of extras. To quote the listing on Right Stuff, the Squid Girl Premium Box Set contains episodes 1 through 27 of the anime directed by Sutomo Mizushima in a chipboard box and includes a hardcover booklet, art cards, a chibi keychain, lenticular card, authenticity card, button pack, CCA donation card, and CCA donations. Now, let's focus on those last two for a sec. The CCA is the Coastal Conservation Association, located in Texas, that's where Sentai is based out of, and every single copy of the premium edition sold donates one dollar to the association. This is, as the card puts it, a squid-tastic way to fight for a healthier ocean. All this for an anime about a squid kid. Fans were thrilled to see the anime receive a dub of season 2, understanding why the cast was replaced and still being happy about Squid Girl's dub being packed to the gills with the same style of humor, puns galore. Squid Girl may not have conquered humanity, but she did conquer the hearts of fans worldwide. The cute cephalopod made waves fast in other countries thanks to the speedy spread of media in the 2010s, and is a testament to how times have changed. The series dub-wise hit some turbulent waves, but didn't fail in putting smiles on fans' faces in every iteration, be it Bang Zoom, Animax, or Sentai. And in the case of the lattermost, the physical release raised money for a good cause, cleaning up the ocean. If you would like to see Squid Girl for yourself, you can watch it in Japanese on Crunchyroll and High Dive, and if you want to see the dub, it's available on High Dive. Links in the description for the physical releases. Thanks for watching. I had a lot of fun today talking about Squid Girl. Please leave a like, subscribe, and leave in the comments what did you think of the dubs of Squid Girl? Did this ocean dwelling emissary catch your heart? What else would you like to see in this series? I'm always listening to suggestions. Shout out to all of my subscribers on Twitch, on screen now. Twitch subscribers get to see my videos the day before they're uploaded, so if you want to see my stuff early, gain access to my exclusive Discord server, and have your name on a video, please consider subscribing. Until next time, take care.